Hi, I'm Christopher Bolton, a production designer from South Africa. Welcome to this series of MSD5 tutorials. Let's get started. Welcome to this edition of the MSD5 tutorials. In this edition, I'm going to be dealing with fast patch, fixture blocks, and seam blocks. The first thing I recommend you do is to hide all the layers of fixtures and sets to make the model easier to work with. You do that by coming to your objects list and hiding all the layers. As you can see, the model is now very simple and easy to work with. It makes the fixtures easy to get to because it is not cluttered with set pieces around it. The first thing I do is switch the program to light mode. Once you have switched it to light mode, you simply come to this icon over here, which says fast patch. Or you can use the hotkey P for patch. That will bring up this dialog. As you can see, the fixtures have now gone blue. That's just a way for you to see which fixtures you are working with and which ones you've already addressed. On this block over here, you can see it's selected to auto increment, meaning that it'll auto address. You do that by clicking on the fixtures. You will see that the blue blocks will disappear. This means that the fixtures have been addressed. This address here shows you what the next address of the next fixture will be. In this case, 231. Then click on Done. Come to my fixtures list, in this case the 700s. Bring up the sight lights. As you can see, the 700s are now gone and the sight lights are now visible. It's the same process. Click on P, enter the address, and then click on the fixtures. Once again, you will now see 266 is the next available address. Click on Done. Go to your layers, deactivate those, and activate the next ones. Click on Patch, You follow this process until such time as you have addressed all the fixtures. When this block comes up, it's asking you if you are okay with it going to the next universe. In this situation, it's slightly different. I'm using LED panels, which is an RGB fixture which uses three channels of information. I don't require for these to each have their own address, and they can therefore share an address which is relatively easy to do. You do that once again, click on patch, you put in the address you want it to be. In this situation we are now in the second universe, so you change it to the second universe. Deselect auto increment, deselect increase by, put the same address in here. and click on all the fixtures. As you can see, the DMX value will not change here, it will stay the same, meaning that all the fixtures are all receiving the same address. Each person has their own personal preference as to how they want to go about addressing their fixtures. This is all dependent on whether you want to use this design for rendering purposes or whether you want to carry on this design for the show. If you want to carry it through to the show, more careful thought has to be given to the planning of your universes and planning of the actual DMX address process. In this situation, I want to use this for pitching purposes and therefore I'm only going to give all the generic fixtures a similar or the same address. Same process. My previous address was 61. This will now be 62. Deselect auto increment. Deselect increase by. Now I can come into the fixtures and I can address them easily enough. Whilst in the same session, you don't have to go done each time. You simply come to up to the block, give it the next address you want it to be, and click on the next set of fixtures.
Once you've done that, I'm going to go into my fixture layer, deselect my park hands, bring up my wash lights, which is the last layer I need to address. In this layer here, I'm going to come to fast patch, keeping in mind my last address was 68. I now need to jump to 70, leaving myself some channels open should I need to add something in later. Now that you have completed your patch to be able to see what addresses you have applied, you can quite simply switch to paper. Once you are in paper, you can switch to fixer schedule. This will give you a breakdown of what addresses you have assigned to each fixture. Printing this, making it very easy to put that information into your desk or into your light jockey or whichever controller you prefer to use. The next thing I would like to illustrate is how to create a scene block. Let's first activate some of the now invisible layers and fixtures. Now what I can do at this stage for an example, we deselect light mode, select these objects, we group them together. Once I've grouped them together, I can now go to File, Export, as a scene block. By doing that, it'll now take it to libraries. I come to my blocks. And save this or export it as a group, or in this case, let's call it dancers in line. What I've effectively done here is I've created and exported just that block on its own. Now you can quite easily come to your insert button come to block and dancers in line will be there. We insert the dancers in line and there you go. What's quite handy about this is you don't have to necessarily only be able to export scene blocks with just objects inside of it. You can also export fixtures and objects together at the same time. As an example, I'm going to use this front of house bar here and I select the fixtures that are attached to it and I group that together. I then go to File, Export as a scene block, call it the front of house bar. By doing this, if I come to scene block, block, front of house, and I insert the front of house bar, it'll be exactly as you exported it. One of the major benefits of using a scene block is that you are able to export it as a group, but you can also ungroup it in the next model. For example, if I now group this together, export it, and call this big band. If I go to a new model, Once I'm in the new model, I can now import that scene block. I'm now able to actually ungroup it and use the individual parts separately. The next thing I'd like to show you is how to create a fixture block. Let's maximize this window. For example, if I want to export these six PAR cans as a fixture block to be used later, the first thing I would need to do is switch to light mode so that the set is not active and I'm only going to be able to affect the fixtures that are active. For now, I'm going to group these together, move them out, rotate them back, add in a bar, Now that I've positioned my lighting bar in the correct place, I can use my left hand mouse button or the elastic band effect. Always make sure that the lighting bar is highlighted and is red. Once the bar is selected, create an assembly. Once I have the assembly, I can go to File, Export as a fixture block, 
put it in the folder I want it to be in. In this case, it's going to be in my spots folder. And I put it into blocks. And I call it above six park hands. Now that I've done that, I can come to my insert fixture. You will see at the bottom here, it says blocks. If I click on that, it'll take us to my blocks. And there is my bar of six park hands. Simple as that. Before I finish off with fixture blocks, I'd like to illustrate to you how the fixture addresses behave when you are working with blocks. For now, I'm going to bring in a block that we've previously saved. There's the bar of six park ends from before. I gave each of those park ends the same address, in this case, universe2 address1, meaning that all these fixtures here will have the same address. If you export a fixture block out of a model and each of those fixtures have the same address, when you import them as a block, each of those fixtures will have the same address again. For example, if I use FastPatch and address these fixtures again, and I give them each an address from 1 to 6, when I export it, and I then import the bar of 6 again, it means that each of the addresses will run consecutively, meaning 1 to 6. If I then import another block, and I put these park ends into the same model, you will now see that these addresses will start from 7 and go to 12. In the same manner, if I now address the fixtures alternatively, and I then export the block here, Let's call this a bar of six stage left. And I export this one. Then I call this one stage right. And I export that. When I import them again, stage left and stage right these addresses of these fixtures will now start at 13 and this one here will start at 24. As you can see, each of the park ends have skipped an address, depending on how you save out the fixture block. That is how the fixture block will behave when being imported. That concludes this edition of the MST5 Tutorials. In the next edition, I'll be dealing with material properties, render properties, and the Fastnet render server.